Uh, hi everyone, my name is Michaela Deesh. And I'm Shannon Deesh. And we are two high school students from Battle Creek, Michigan. We attend the Battle Creek Area Math and Science Center as well as Penfield High School. Um, well, first off, we'd really like to thank Texas Instruments for having us here and letting us come and present to you guys about our story and a bit of our perspective as well. Uh, over the past few years, we've had the really amazing opportunity to participate in some really unique experiences which have opened our eyes to uh, the connection between what we learn in the classroom and the real world. Uh, we're self-admitted nerds, and we've always loved our STEM classes. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what STEM means, but in case there's someone in the audience that doesn't, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. We've always enjoyed learning the theory of math and science upon which our universe is built. However, it's really the hands-on experiences uh, using technology like TI technology that has really helped us understand the value of what we learn in the classroom every day. So for Michaela and I, that began when we entered a science competition. We were actually part of the team that entered and won the Conrad Foundation Spirit of Innovation Awards in October of 2010. During this competition, we got to design a nutrition bar, which was met all the requirements for NASA so it could be used as a meal supplement for the astronauts while they were in space. During this competition, we got flown to San Francisco Bay Area. We were provided with mentors who were actual food scientists, and we got to go into their labs and work with them with real technology that they use every day. And this was really amazing. Throughout the competition, we used our TI technology for everything. I mean, we used it during our just running simple calculations to running formulas through it, which was really amazing. Uh, after the competition ended, Shannon and I formed a relationship with a local food uh, laboratory in Battle Creek and we continued working on our nutritional science. Uh, through that partnership, we were given access to a lab complete with our own set of keys, which is really awesome. And um, we developed a new nutritional bar specifically for flight on the, to the International Space Station, which we called the STEM bar, which we are using to help promote STEM education. Uh, the folks at NASA, specifically Leland Melvin, who I don't know if any of you guys saw him, he was here earlier, he's the director of education at NASA. They were kind enough to fly our uh, bar on STS-134, which was the final launch of Space Shuttle Endeavor. Personally, I have always been interested in the brain and neuroscience, so we decided that we wanted to investigate creating a viable, functional food product that would help promote brain health. So I'm sure as you guys know, there's tons of bars on the market for people who are athletes or people who want to go on a diet. But there's not really a bar for people that are wanting to stay up late and study for a math test. So as nerds, we definitely felt underrepresented. Um, after some research, we decided that doxa, doxohexonic acid, sorry, that's a mouthful. <laughs> it's an omega-3 long chain fatty acid, uh, which makes up, it's commonly known as DHA, and it makes up about 30% of the human brain. Uh, we decided it would be great in our bar, uh, but it has a slight problem. DHA oxidizes really rapidly, and it creates a rancid odor and a taste and smell of fish. <laughs> and that happens within just a few weeks, which is far shorter than a trip to the sh uh, store shelves, let alone a long duration space flight. Uh, so after a year of stability testing, I am proud to say that Shannon and I have successfully developed tested and are in the process of patenting an encapsulation technique which stabilizes DHA oil in a manner that allows it to be used in shelf-stable food products. So, <laughs> thank, you. thank you. As a result of what we've been doing with that, we got invited to the first annual White House Science Fair in October of 2010. There were 72 amazing students from across the country that had participated in some really incre cre incredible projects. And the morning at the White House Honestly, I'll never forget it. We got to meet the Mythbusters, Bill Nye the Science Guy, Lori Garver, who was number two at NASA, as well, and even had some alone time in the Oval Office, which was especially cool for Michaela, who's wanted to be president since she was a little girl. <laughs> then President Obama called us into the East Wing and gave us a speech about the importance of STEM education to our country. He told us that the United States was currently 25th in math and 21st in science, and that we needed to do something to change this trend. This came as a complete shock to Michaela and I, as we had always loved our math and science classes and didn't understand how we were so far behind. We can't even really name 24 countries, let alone 24 countries that could be ahead of us in math and science. Um, after we left the White House, 
we were honestly sort of shocked and we started asking ourselves why we were so far behind. The amount we learn as high school students today is really astounding, especially when it's viewed in a historical context. It's amazing to think that the curriculum taught to hundreds of thousands of students in AP classes across the country was just the exclusive domain of just a handful of professors and scientists just a few generations ago. Uh, we are wondering how we can, how can be that we now find ourselves falling further and further behind in the very areas that made us who we are as a society and a nation. So we left the White House that day struggling to understand something that we've had experience firsthand with. Giving excellent teachers, outstanding curriculum, and many, many interested adults like you guys trying to make a difference. How can it be that so many of our peers don't love math and science as much as we do? As big supporters of STEM education, Shannon and I decided to do our part to try and help the problem. We made it a priority to speak with as many fellow students, business leaders, politicians, educators, anyone that would spend five minutes and listen to us about the importance of STEM education, and we've traveled as much as our high school schedule will allow us to. So during this time, we've, one thing has become very clear to us is that the same things that inspire Michaela and I inspire our peers. From Council Bluffs, Iowa to Baltimore, Maryland, all the kids we've talked to are part of the technology generation. We've all grown up on our cell phones and our social networking sites. Instead of calling people, we can text them or post on their Facebook walls. We think that email is slow. Technology is a deeply integrated part of our lives, and we don't notice it because it's always been there for us. We view technology not so much as a tool, but as a resource and a lifestyle, and we use it every chance we get. Our technology that we use, has, we've used it to automate as much of our daily lives as possible so we can focus on the other tasks at hand. And we do so that technology becomes an extension of the way we live, and so we can actually work on the other stuff we're trying to work on. Perhaps the most important lesson that we've learned is how technology can bridge the gap between the theory of the classroom and real life in ways that are really, really inspiring for us as students. When I was watching the launch of the space shuttle, and the ground began to rumble beneath my feet, and endeavor lurched skyward, I suddenly had an entirely new appreciation for Newton's third law, which is something my AP physics teacher had taught me just a few months before. And physics leapt from an abstract concept on a textbook to the very real roar of the engines, and I realized I would never view a physics lecture the same way again. I want to save that feeling and live it over and over again and share it with as many people as I can. Just like the trip to the food science lab two years earlier, my classes suddenly came to life in a new and unexpected way. I could suddenly see myself as a physicist and a chemical engineer or a neurosurgeon, and I understood how all of my classes would take me there. Be it through a competition, using TI technology in a classroom, a project, an extracurricular club, or any other hands-on experience, making that connection from the abstract and making it real has been the most inspiring experience for the both of us. It seems that there are an infinite number of ways to use technology to make it real. It's amazing that the same technology that's in our calculators can also be used to conduct an experiment that can tell the different rate of evaporation versus water or alcohol. Um, but as any teenager can tell you, making it real also means making it real in a way that's inspiring and socially acceptable to our friends. If Michaela and I were to tell our friends that we love math, that would elicit an entirely different response than telling them that we just finished a project to develop a Facebook app that predicts whether a boy likes you based on the number of statuses he likes or posts you put on your wall. The difference between the theory of probability and the reality of figuring out who likes you puts our AP statistics in an entirely new light. Shannon and I dream of the day when the Math Olympiad team gets as much space in the yearbook as the football team. The day when the booster organization for the science club gets as much, is as big as the one for the homecoming dance and the day when students can proudly put up pictures of their favorite scientists on the wall right next to their favorite athlete or singer. We applaud all the recent efforts from the president on down to try and uh, elevate the value put on STEM education. We've heard the expression that the children are the future many times. If that is true, then it is equally true that you in this, at this conference, those of you who are the teachers, are the ones who shape the future. It is your inspiration, dedication, and wisdom that pr will prepare and ready us for the future as an individual and as the greater society. We are both, you guys are the gatekeepers of the future, and we are both honored and proud to have you as our guides. So thank you very much, and does anyone have any questions?
That's the Uh, yes, the first annual national, the first annual White House Science Fair. What? Sorry. Um, I think so. Yeah. I, yeah. It is. It, the president holds it every year. He actually just had the last one last month, I believe. Yeah. And he decides who's going. He chooses about a hundred kids to go and present their projects to him and his wife. So, it's a really cool experience. It's very cool. How's the packing process? It's long. It's <laughs> a lot harder than I thought it would, but we're currently, um, we just finished stability testing. It's, we had to do about a year of stability testing to make sure it could have a decent shelf life. And right now we're in the process of talking to lawyers and figuring that out now. So it's been really interesting to figure out how all that stuff works. I am a senior, yes. I graduate in a few months and I'm really excited. I'm in 10th grade this year, so. Oh, only 10th grade? Yeah. Tell us where you're going to college. <laughs> I just got into Harvard two days ago. Not Harvard. Harvard. Uh, Cornell, I messed that up. So, <laughs> I'm probably going to Cornell. <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> Anything else? Will these be available for purchase? Uh, we're hoping, we're hoping to get them out into the market um, to, we're planning on using them as sort of a Newman's own thing, so you buy the bar and all the proceeds go back into STEM education. So. Maybe they should go into the vending machines and sports. That, that, would, awesome. that was part of what we really would like to do. So how did you team together with your students and Um, if we're... Oh, could, um, what's the question again? How did you team together if you're not the same? Oh, okay. Um, well, she's asking how we could team together if we weren't the same age. We are sisters, and so we've always, we're best friends too. It's kind of awesome. I wish she was my twin. But so we've been working together since we were really little, and we've always done everything together. So it kind of just, when Shannon came to me and said, we should do this competition, I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Uh, my dad is back there. Both my dad and my mom are back there, and my dad, <laughs> my dad does a software development, and my mom is an accountant. Anything else? I think we're about done. Well, thank you guys so thank much. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>